Good morning. The purpose of this program is to remind you that the greatest spiritual teacher who ever walked on this earth, Christ Jesus, told us that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And uh, throughout every age since then, there have been men and women who have discovered that this is true. They have found that man does not live merely by work, sleep, rest, food, drink, vacations, relaxations, but that there is another factor that enters life much more important than any of these human activities. The Word of God which is the message of God's help and uh, God's grace toward man becomes to us living waters, meat, drink, energy, strength. The master had missed a meal, a luncheon, and his disciples were concerned about him, and they said, shall we go to the city and uh, get you some meat? And he said, no, no, I have meat, ye know not of. And that meat is to do the will of the Father that sent me. In other words, I do not live by what you call meat, bread, wine, water alone. Oh, yes. I eat and I drink. I partake of food the same as you do, but that is the least of the sustaining influence in my life. The Word of God, which I take into my thought, in my meditations, when I sit by the seaside, when I go up to the mountains to pray, to ponder, the Word of God that is given to me and my soul, that is really the meat that I have of which the world knows nothing. That is why I can say to you that I can give you living waters even though I have no bucket with which to draw it from the well, I can give you living waters that spring up into life eternal. And it means that I can give you this word of God. I can give you the assurance of his presence in all experiences. I can remind you of the great promises that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I can remind you that even though today as you go about your work, your tasks, your duties, even though you go through deep waters, you will not drown. Even though you go through fire, the flames will not kindle upon you. Why? Well, just remember why. Because the Word of God is in you and with you the Word of God is your protection, your safety, your security. You know that even if you have to miss a meal, 
This word of God will be your meat, your water, your bread of life, your staff upon which to lean. So have no fear for any of your problems today. Have no fear for any of the conditions that you meet out in the world. And let me give you the word of God to carry with you as your prayer for today and tomorrow. Please hear me. For this is the word of God that I give you. He that is within you is greater than he that is in the world. And so, in your work in the home, the factory, the market, out on the road, driving your car, please remember, there is a he within you, this word of God or spirit of truth, and it is greater than any circumstance or any condition with which you will have to meet. And whenever confronted with what would seem to be an obstacle, an obstruction, a problem, pause for one instant to remember, he that is within me is greater than he that is in the world. Now this word of God in your mouth in your mind, in your thought, carried with you throughout the day and remembered again at night, will be a light under your feet. It will be a staff upon which to lean. It will be meat and drink unto you. Should you in uh, any wise encounter danger, this word of God will be your protection. It will assure you of safety, of security. And should anything arise in your experience to disturb your peace, to give you even the slightest fear, will you remember today that he that is within uh, you is greater than he that is in the world. And rest, rest in that word of God. Remember now and from now on, you will not live by bread alone. You will not live merely by money, by human rest. But you will live by every word that is brought into your thought, into your remembrance, into your speech. May I tell you a great secret? From the moment that you begin to take the word of God into your thought secretly, silently, telling no one about it. From that moment on, a change begins to take place in you. And if you will follow me for just a few weeks, you will find your friends and relatives asking you, what has made this change in you? You are different. And you will be different. You will have found the great secret of life. You will have found the secret the great master tried to impart to us 2,000 years ago. And that secret is this. The kingdom of God is within you. And uh, it becomes evident, it becomes vital in your experience the moment you realize the kingdom of God through the word of God which becomes a part of your body, of your being, of your mind, of your soul.
In the days to come, this program will bring to you the Word of God in many ways, and it will give you a key to successful living in a world that is filled with the same discords and inharmonies our ancestors knew. We have a world today of great mechanical progress. But we also have the same problems as of old and intensified. But we also have a remedy, a remedy that has been known to but few people. Even though it has been given us for 2,000 years or more. And now we today have the opportunity of proving that we do not live by bread alone, that we do not live by the human activities alone, but that the secret word held sacredly within us becomes as living water, meat, wine, bread, the very staff of life. And so, until we meet again, this is Joel reminding you that he that is within you is greater than he that is in the world. Good morning, this is Joel. In our daily living, we make use of every human wisdom and every human power to conduct our affairs harmoniously and intelligently. We use the best of our education and of our health and of our experience. We use the goodwill that we have brought into existence by our rightful treatment of each other in all our ways of living. But very often we forget that there is a cement that would bind us more closely together, that would bind us to each other, so that Whatever is the good of one would become the good of all. And uh, that whatever would motivate one for good would be a benefit, a blessing to all with whom we come in contact. But this cement is not material, nor is it human but rather is a spiritual quality. In the past few years, you have read much and heard much of bringing spiritual qualities into our everyday experience, of uh, bringing more and more of spiritual values into our life for every purpose, but very seldom have we thought ourselves, what is spiritual value, what is spiritual qualities, 
how do you bring these spiritual powers into existence? And it is the purpose of this program to show you not only that the bringing of spiritual qualities into your life will bless you and bless all those with whom you are associated, but also to show you how to bring spiritual qualities into active life. The Word of God is the great spirit, the great truth that becomes flesh, that becomes tangible in our world. And it is through the Word of God entertained within us, the Word of God thought upon, dwelt upon, remembered that makes the spiritual activity in our life, that brings the spiritual qualities into expression. May I say to you here that there is no way to bring a, a spiritual good, a spiritual power into your experience from outside your own being that spiritual quality or spirituality is not something that comes to you, but rather it is something that flows out from you when you entertain the Word of God within you. The great master Christ Jesus gave us this secret in that wonderful chapter the 15th chapter of John, the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John, in which he reveals to us our relationship to God. Ye are the branches, I am the vine, and the Father is the husbandman. And from there he goes on and says, that if you abide in my word, if you let my word abide in you, ah, then the great joys, the great peace, the great delights of this world will be yours. No evils will come to you. There will be nothing for you to fear. No harm can come to you or to yours if you abide in me, if you let my word abide in you. Now, you see, working this out practically, it means if you every day take the word of God into your consciousness, into your mind, into your thoughts, and uh, as often as possible throughout the day, Remind yourself of a word of God, of a message from within. And again, do this secretly. Do it sacredly. Do not do your praying where uh, men can behold and call you righteous. But let this spiritual work be done in the inner sanctuary of your own being, in the deep, secret, silent place within you. For today and for tomorrow, why not let us remind ourselves that thy grace is my sufficiency in all things. You see, there are many times in our day when we believe that we have a need of money, and humanly we have. And uh, at other times we need companionship. We need help from others. 
or perhaps we need some inner healing of the mind or of the body. Perhaps we need a greater sense of love in our homes or in our business. Perhaps we need a greater sense of forgiveness or of understanding of those who are associated with us. Well, there is a simple way in which all our needs can be met. Much more simple than going out and struggling for that which you need at the moment, yet one which will enable you to do everything you are called upon to do in the home or in the business or on the road, and yet enable you to do it without fear, without doubt, without anxiety, and give you, in addition, the assurance that your every need will be met. Now, the word of God for us today is, Thy grace is my sufficiency in all things. Whenever a need becomes apparent to you, whenever there seems to be a lack or a limitation, Will you, today and tomorrow, remember that thy grace is my sufficiency in all things? Fill your consciousness today. Fill your mind today at every opportunity with this assurance. And watch how even out in the world of practical everyday affairs, your every need will be met through the Word of God, through your realization of this great truth. When we take a Word of God, a statement of truth, like, Thy grace is my sufficiency, into our thought several times a day, we call this a meditation. We say we are meditating upon a spiritual truth or we are pondering a spiritual truth or we are taking the word of God into our soul as if it were a seed and there let this word of God take root and eventually flower forth and then bear fruit. For too many years, we have been expecting our good to come to us from outside sources, from persons, from conditions, from circumstances. And uh, thereby we have lost the opportunity to prove that actually our good comes to us from the depths of our own inner being. Do you not know that each one of us is one with the Father? Do you know not that each one of us has the kingdom of God within his own being? Do you not know that all that the Father hath is mine? Then... Uh, why not let this grace of God flow out from us to all those in the world who do not yet know that divine grace is really within us? Well, until we meet again, this is Joel reminding you that thy grace is my sufficiency in all things.